It's that time of year again. Hay season has snuck up on us. Can't believe we're already cutting our first uh, round of hay this year. But I missed the first couple days. We've been getting chickens back and the chicken houses have been tied up with that. But luckily Eric's dad, Steve, has been able to cut the hay. He fluffed it. So we're starting to rake some today. Uh, we're gonna bail a little bit, try to get all the kinks worked out of the baler. That way uh, we can hit it full force tomorrow. I got my partner with me today. Parker man, say hey. Hey. You got your tractor shirt on? Yeah. What are we doing today? What are we doing? I'm driving a tractor. And what are we loading that on that tractor? Hay. Hay bales. So we've got us a load of hay over here. We're about to take it. We're going to wrap this in the morning, but we're getting a few loads taken. So Parker, let's go get the truck and let's go take this load to the house. You want to? Yeah. We're getting going. We've got both balers out in the field running. Hopefully tomorrow we'll get a full day of it. Well, the end of hay season last year, uh, Parker had to come to the hay field. We cut hay about two days after Coleman was born and I couldn't leave Parker at home with a newborn and my wife. So Parker had to come and learn how to work in the hay field. And he did surprisingly well, he loved it. So he's back this year um, with the coronavirus. We don't have daycare. So we're kind of juggling who keeps the boys and who works when. So Parker's helping me. We've got our first load of hay hauled. We're going to get the Bobcat. We've got to unload it off the trailer and then we're going to wrap it starting in the morning. So hopefully we can get a good bit of hay hauled this evening and then get back at it hard tomorrow. We got rain coming in tomorrow night. So it's going to be a busy 24 hours, but hopefully we can get it all done. We've unloaded all the hay. The trailer's empty. Now what do we go do? Get some more hay. All right, let's go get more hay. Hay loaded up. Now what do we go do? Get the bobcat. Get the bobcat and do what? What do we use the bobcat for? Uh, get the hay. Get the hay off the trailer? Yeah. Okay. Let's go do that. Let's go. It's 7.23 p.m. We're still hauling some hay. Still got my partner with me. Got some goldfish for supper for now. Parker's bedtime is usually eight o'clock. Not tonight. So this is what we got hauled after day one. We got three loads, hauling 14 bales each on each load. So it's a start. We'll have a busy day tomorrow, but always Hi, thankful Lincoln. for everything we can get done. Hopefully things will go smoothly tomorrow. We can get everything done. We can get all this wrapped, everything else bailed, hauled, and wrapped before the rain hits. It wouldn't be a day on the farm if we didn't have something tear up. Uh, we weren't able to net wrap any of the bales today. Uh, luckily, we had the backups, we had some twine, so everything we bailed today, we used twine. We're gonna go take a look at this uh, baler and see what's going on with it. Hopefully, we'll have the net wrap back going for tomorrow. That net wrap, uh, you can really cruise through the bales when you can wrap them in that and don't have to stop in time with the twine. Day two in the hay field is underway. I've been picking up chickens all morning, getting everything situated with the chicken houses. Eric and his dad started uh, raking and baling some hay earlier. So we've got some bales ready to go. I'm coming back to the hay field, going to start getting these loaded and hopefully start getting them wrapped shortly. The rain's coming in tonight still, so we got a lot of work to do. I 
I took a few videos last night while we were working on the baler trying to get it back to where we could net wrap today, but the footage was too blurry. It was pretty dark when we were working, uh, so I don't have any footage of that. But we did get the net wrap back working. We had a broken belt, so we got it cleaned out, got the belt put back on. But just to show you the difference in case you don't know, this is a net wrap here. You can see it's like a plastic net wrap and it basically goes around the bale. It's very quick when you're out in the pasture or in the hay field. Uh, it doesn't take as long. It doesn't have to tie off or anything like that. Um, some, I'll show you a bale over here with the twine. You can't hardly see the twine. There's some there, but basically there's twine. Here's a little piece here that's kind of loose. So you can kind of see what it looks like. Um, the twine is, it takes a lot longer in the hay field, but it is biodegradable. So in the winter time, when you're going to feed the cows, you just dump it out and you don't have to worry about it. You may have a few strings left over if you want to clean them up uh, in the spring, but they are biodegradable. The net wrap is plastic. So you either have to cut it off before you put it in, or you have a mess to clean up uh, come springtime. So I guess they both have their perks. Um, Today, we're pressed for time, so the net wrap is really nice. It allows us to get a lot more hay baled uh, than having to wait on the baler to wrap the twine. We've got the last of the hay raked up. You can see way off in the distance, Eric's over there on the tractor, still baling. So we still got some to go, but we're moving along. We're doing pretty good today. The hay's winding down for the day. I'm headed to go get the next last load. Got my partner back. Parker, say hey. Where are we going? We're going to ride that tractor. We're heading in with the last load of hay. Got an empty hay field, it's a beautiful sight. Didn't have a drop of rain fall from the time we cut it till today. So it's been a great first cutting. We're uh, probably about 50 bales away from having everything wrapped. So we'll be excited to get all this wrapped. Um, this ryegrass is still pretty green. So it should make some really good haylage. Here's the wrapper in action. You set a bell of hay down. It pushes it forward. You see those tires are slowly moving. So the wrapper itself moves down the line. The hay bales stay where they are. And as they come on down to the end, as they come on down to the end, they drop them off. So there's two rolls of film that are wrapping it up. So when you set the next hay bale down, it triggers it to start. The last bale is going on the wrapper. That little small bale on the back was just left over in one of the fields, so we'll probably just feed it to some of the cows now. So we've got all this wrapped. 
we ended up with about 175 bales. So it wasn't as much as we thought, uh, but still it's very good for the first cutting. We should be able to get two more cuttings unless it just turns out real dry. Parker's talking to the cows over here. But we, uh, we beat the rain. Luckily, we were able to wrap all this. If we were putting this in a barn, we wouldn't have been able to have bailed it today. It's too green. Uh, possibly could cause the barn to catch on fire. But since we wrapped it, uh, we could bail it with a lot more moisture in it, which is good because with this ryegrass, it'll make some good haylage and it'll be real good to feed to the cows in the fall. It's about to get dark on us, but we're done. Uh, we bailed this hay. It was right around 30% moisture. Um, another day would have dried out. Typically for dry hay, you want it around 12 to 15% uh, at the most. Hey, Parker, tell everybody to say thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Hey, that means give us a thumbs up and tell them to click subscribe. Say click subscribe. Okay. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.